It's hard to believe it, isn't it? We're 50 vlogs in, 50 vlogs today. So from the 31st of December 2017, up until today, I don't even know what date it is, but I know it's 50 vlogs. But it's not all rosy. It's not all as rosy as it seems on the surface. For instance, this morning I woke up with a huge feeling of anxiety, not because it was the 50th vlog and I thought, how am I gonna celebrate this? But every now and then it dawns on me the size of the undertaking that I've taken on here and making a brewery from scratch is no mean feat. Welding up the tanks, ordering all the parts, buying machinery, ingredients, everything else, which is all gonna be part of it. Filling out the forms of H for HMRC, everything, the full shebang, insurance, the lot, can really make you nervous. <laughs> it can really worry you as to whether it's gonna work out or not. So this morning I've decided to take a new approach. It's probably not new, but revisit the approach, revisit the ideology that I began this vlogging series with, and that is just to relax and don't worry about it. So deep breath taken. It will get done when it gets done. I'm not prepared to put the same kind of stress and pressure on myself as what I did have last year. I'm not gonna do it. It'll make me ill and everybody suffers. So I'm gonna enjoy the day. I think a little bit of work down here, a little bit of welding, and then I have to put together a list of fittings and ancillaries required to, at the very least, get one fermenter up and running, the boil kettle, the HLT, and the mash tun, and then once they're running, we can retrofit everything else after the event. So let's get some welding done, folks. Feel like I had a real good impact on this particular conical weld. If we take a look, you can see that we started to run and found the first big gap there, which obviously blew out, but I managed to patch up. But the run looks pretty good. And then we were washing the base metal in, so the weld looks a bit low there, and I started adding rod. And it comes back up until we hit another small blowout. These are all bad fit up areas, and I've just put put some more weld metal in there until we get to the bottom where it slightly start to distort. But that's the first cone of today, which is Sunday. I'm happy with it. I've just got to turn over now and reflow the other side, which is going to be the hygienic side. So I'm doing that last in case I do get any coke in. If it's on the outside, I'll just grind it off, you know. seem to be improving on welding up these cone sections so I'm going to try something different froggy advised me to change out to a bigger tungsten so I think what I'm going to do is pull this one out and swap it over for a 2.4 well I only got like a, a one inch run in but a bigger tungsten dramatically improved the weld. So I'm gonna swap this one out, put another cone on the table, we'll do the grinding later, and give it a whirl with the 2.4 mil tungsten. I think we might have uh, just seen an improvement like that. Lesson learnt on that one, I think. So, the bigger tungsten, yes, it works a tree, it's a good idea. I also used a 2.4 mil filler rod as well, as the 2.4 mil tungsten and lesson learned while I was racing along down the uh, seam it looked perfect the puddle was taking the metal nicely I thought wow it's taking this metal really well considering the thickness of the electrode uh, the thickness of the uh, of the rod but having taken the backing off and turned it over I now know where all that rod's gone it's all come out the back and it's left a real firm and thick ridge 
which I've got to basically grind away because it's also got coking in there as well because I was only backing with aluminium and not argon. I can't reflow it because I'll just be reflowing all that contamination so I've got to basically grind it away. So lesson learnt, I think next time I'll still use the 2.4mm tungsten but I might put the shielding gas on the back, use a smaller size filler rod, one size down, see if I can run the whole length by doing that and hopefully the other side will be reflowed naturally. So if you look at it, you can see that we've got quite a bit of grinding to do. I've taken most of it off down here, but I just can't reflow it with all those bits of uh, carbon in there. Don't even get chance to blink and it's 10 past two. I'm gonna have to wrap the day up and go home because I've got to put together a list of parts that I need to get these tanks operational. Outlets, fittings, I need a chiller. I think I might be able to use a counter flow chiller. I also need some pumps, so I have to make sure that I do not spend what little cash I have to put towards this on stainless steel fittings and then have no pumps to pump the beer around. So I might just, well, one more cone up, I've got two to do, and then I'm gonna have to shoot. Oh, I'm just a little bit pleased with myself. The last one turned out to be the quickest that I've done yet. Nice hygienic grinding, <laughs> I think it'll do. So we've got one, two, three, way up, four and five. So that's five cones, sort of cones sorted out. The next thing I need to worry about is getting the fitment right on this. As you can see, it's really nice, nice and snug all the way around, but I'm just concerned about coking on the inside if I wash from the out. I think I'm definitely going to go inside and put a fillet weld in. Do I do that first and then have the coking on the outside? And I don't know because making a bar for this is going to be quite tricky. You know, a purge bar. I guess I could get some some flat uh, flat copper and bang it on there, but I don't know. So these are all questions that I've got to answer either on the job, Bob a job, or you guys can tell me what's the best. I've taken loads of advice uh, from the comments section over the past few weeks and today will be no exception. Right, Gemma wants some potatoes picking up from the fruit and veg man. It's three o'clock, I'm not sure what time he closes and it's getting cold in here. So I think it's about time I just grabbed all my stuff and we shot up home. What are they? Stuffing balls. Stuffing balls with onion in? That's how you make stuffing balls. But, but big chunks of onion. Yeah, but well, it'll be fine. Onion, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Zoomed in quite a lot. It's not zoomed in. Well, that zoomed in. <laughs> so let's check briefly on yesterday's brew. It should be bubbling away quite nicely by now. Oh yeah, it looks like a garlic bread. So I'm gonna close the lid on that. We'll let it ferment away. Fingers crossed it doesn't get any nasties because it's fermenting in the kitchen after all. And Abigail has a habit of sticking her fingers in anything she can find. Right, so before we sign off on Sunday's vlog, I've been sat here mulling over the cost of the fittings for for all, all of the kit so i'll just quickly run down the list and show you what we've got so far i'm still to do the fermenter but i need to get this vlog edited so we'll come back to this another day but for those of you who are interested this is a rough outline a rough list of the valves and fittings and how we're going to configure the tanks so first of all we're going to start with a boil kettle and you can see that we're going to have uh, I forgot to mark that A is a one inch outlet for the takeoff and recirc B is the drain outlet at the bottom that's going to consist of a concentric reducer to get me from the four inches at the bottom of the cone to two inches 
I've gone for a two inch outlet there to allow all of the trub out of the bottom of the fermenter because it really does get stuck in there. And C at the top is going to be a recirc inlet um, and D is going to be the element mount and that's either going to be a 1.25 BSP or if I go for the tri-clamp it would be some type of ATDIN flange, something like that. Then we've got the mash tun, we're going to use the flat tank that I picked up from Derby the other week, I think it was from Darren. That's going to cons that's going to make the mash tun for us and what we're going to do is put that on legs and make it slant forwards in one direction towards A which will just be a one inch outlet with a one inch nut liner and valve. And then what I can do with these valves you see on the other side until I put some permanent pipe work in I can just put a uh, an RJT blank on the other side of that valve with a snap lock socket or something welded onto it or just one inch half inch BSP sockets with the half inch snap lock fitting screwed in. And finally we come to the HLT very simple again A is going to be just a two inch outlet running through a 90, a male, a valve and of course the concentric reducer to get me down from the wider outlet of the cone at four inches where the rollers went in and then B is just going to be an inlet at the top to allow us just to recirculate that hot water during preheat. So it's as simple as that folks it really is there are other bits to go on there is the fermenter to complete as I said I'll put that itemized list together probably tomorrow the day after or when I've got a bit of time because at the minute I'm sort of uh, trying not to do too much today and I've got to put the vlog together of course so we'll be back in the shop tomorrow the kids are off school so there's a bit of juggling to do it's half term but I think we'll cope I think we'll cope we'll see you then Baby, follow the one.